Join us now. It's O Jenica, O Jupe, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenica. I bet you saw the parody that you was trending what? over the weekend. You, you have to stretch it further. <laughs> My last name. How are you this morning? I'm good. Perfect. I'm good. good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Oji, Oji, Oji. Okay, You always sing. Perfect. Well. Good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending in River State, where violence broke out at the Independent National Electoral Commission office in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, after thugs alleged to be loyal to the People's Democratic Party clashed with some members of the All Progressives Congress. The governorship candidate of the APC in the state, Tonya Cole, had arrived at the INEC office to inspect materials used for the governorship election that was held on March 18th, when the fracas began. The PDP members, who were already at the INEC office, insisted that both parties must inspect the materials at the same time. Tonya Cole says he was slapped and injured in the fracas that broke out and claimed that the members of the PDP are planning to prevent him from inspecting the materials that would enable him and the party to file a petition against the victory of Sim Fubara, candidate of the PDP, who was declared the winner of the governorship election. We got there right at the roundabout. First, they are barricading the entire roundabout, so you cannot even access it. We get there, the next minute they are standing in front of me and telling me that they are going to embarrass me, that they are not going to allow me to get in and I should get back. The next thing I know, I receive a blow at the back of my head, a slap, somebody is holding my shirt, throwing waters, and they began to throw stones, destroyed our vehicles, and injured me on the shoulder. What happened was a physical assault to prevent me from getting sick disease and to prevent me now they're going to mobilize today tomorrow all the way till friday what does that tell you by friday we are out of time for filing documents by friday we have no ctc by friday we will not be able to petition what is pdp afraid of i mean this is so unfortunate the level of impunity rascality in river state needs to be checked i mean he claims that the thugs also threatened to kill him just because of politics, Dr. Abati? Well, I think, you know, any form of threat, violence, or act of aggression arising from the, uh, you know, 2023 general elections, uh, to the extent of people threatening other people's lives, Acceptable. should be condemned. What the law says is that persons who are aggrieved should go to court, whatever they are aggrieved about. That's the process. The Electoral Act section 149 makes it very clear if you are not happy with the procedure by INEC you go to court okay and then going to court the uh, system has also provided the uh, you know uh, framework for that in terms of going to the tribunals and all of that what caused this conflict in Port Harcourt was that Pastor Tanya Cole wanted access to INEC to inspect materials election materials so that they can make their case they think that Simi, uh, uh, Simi Fubara was not the rightful winner of that election and that he was declared governor-elect and that that would be challenging a court of law Pastor Tonyo Cole and his party APC they have the right to raise such a concern but then on their way there was a clash at the INEC office because the APC, uh, the PDP was also on the ground to inspect materials and all of that you know resulted uh, in this reported assault threats and all of that i hope that uh, pastor toyoko will take the consequential step because i wouldn't be surprised if that uh, incident was recorded as we're seeing of uh, you know uh, taking up the matter legally because nobody has the right to assault another person Absolutely not. And, you know, the law should take its course. And we hope that, you know, the law enforcement agencies uh, will pay more attention to what is going on in uh, River State. You will recall that during the uh, election, before and during, a group of, uh, you know, governorship candidates had to stage a public protest. Yes about the circumstances. A group of women yeah, also that. protested. Oh, clad in black, yeah. Yes, you know, uh, all wearing black, yeah. saying that, look, this wasn't going to be a free and fair process uh, because of different allegations that came up. The uh, security agencies, they didn't do much about it. And now it's got into this level. Now, 
on the back of this, another incident occurred in River State, in Port Harcourt again, whereby lawyers who had gone to uh, Port Harcourt to take on election cases were arrested by the police. And the police said, oh, they got intelligence uh, that some people uh, who were lodged in a certain hotel were moving about with election uh, uh, materials that seemed to have an uh, INEC uh, logo. They swooped down on them and they arrested them and they collected the materials at their disposal. Well, we're told those lawyers have been released, uh, but that the materials seized from them, mm. they're waiting for INEC to come and confirm whether they are fake materials or INEC documents. Now, all of this untidiness will just heat up the polity. Absolutely. Create a climate of fear and anxiety and conflict in River State. So um, it's important that all parties you know, conduct themselves peacefully and that the security agencies pay close attention. I keep saying the security agencies, particularly the police, yes. they collected a lot of money for this election. That their assignment that they were given by President Buhari, who charged them to be professional and do their work, does not end with elections. Mm. It goes into the post-election season. Well said, Dr. Abati. I mean... Refi, mm. Tonya Cole is saying, what, what, what are they afraid of, the PDP? Why so, couldn't it just I, I, be a I, I, seamless I, I, process? They knew he was going to yeah, go and collect his materials today, at the, I mean, yesterday at the INEC office, and that happened. So the question we should ask, what is the PDP afraid of? Yeah, that's what he's asking. And when we want to talk about justice, let's come to justice with clear hands. Because you see, it favors you today. The day it doesn't favor you, hope you will not complain. I keep telling people that. Even if it's done in your favor, please be the first to say, I don't want it since it's not just. After all the election shenanigans that happened in River State, we saw what happened in River State. Highly disputed elections. Toya Core is going to court. At first, he started over the weekend. They arrested his lawyers and they arrested their legal brief and the evidence that they wanted to use to present at the tribunal. So all of this is because he wants to file his case at the tribunal now. Well, how do you arrest a lawyer? And, I, and I'm shocked that the Nigerian Bar Association has not even come up to speak up against this. And I don't think the Nigerian Bar Association should be quiet. What happened to the Nigerian Bar Association? Again, you see, we need advocates and, and activists to lead our association. Kudos to Lumidi Apata, the outgoing president, for what he did. And I just hope this incumbent administration of the NBA should rise up and not be found wanting. Kudos again to Lumidi Apata. Because that man showed exemplary leadership. And I say it without missing words. Yeah. I think this administration should take a cue for it. Lawyers were arrested with their brief. And the evidence they had with them to present electoral matters. And afterwards, they went there to bail them. Tonya Ko didn't leave them till after 10 p.m. Finally, they said they would release the lawyers, but they would not release their brief. When did the police start arresting legal brief and kidnapping legal brief? So what is the opposition party afraid of? Or the other party, the, the ruling party in River State, the PDP, afraid of? Then, he wanted to collect certified true copy from INEC. Then the PDP, remember, they want to collect them. I said there must, must be total inspection of the materials. Why was inspection of or collection of certified true copy cause a brohaha? Individual parties can collect their certified true copy anytime, any day. And that led to a chaos that he had to do an Instagram live yesterday. He was stoned. Yes. He at the back, he showed yes. it on television. Unacceptable. And he's going to go back there. He said he's not going to be cowed and intimidated. The PDP had their right of rebuttal yesterday. All they said is they too they went to protest because they didn't trust INEC. Yeah. And that's why that brohaha ensued. Right. Truth has to be told, we need to live a life of integrity in our country. We can't keep using our power to muscle other people down. Mr. Tonya Ko has a right to get the certificate of uh, the CTC, certified true copy yes. of the materials used to be able to file his case. And nobody should stop him. He should get it. Please. Right. Well, what country are we building? We'll take another story. In a move to maintain press freedom, the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria has called the attention of the Nigerian government to what it terms the flagrant violation of the Nigerian Broadcasting Code by the National Broadcasting Commission. 
in two separate letters addressed to the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, signed by the Executive Secretary of Bonn. The organization says Nigeria broadcast stations no longer trust the professional judgment of the NBC in the areas of imposition of fines for alleged infractions. Bond says in quote that the high handedness of the NBC is almost suffocating the broadcast media, saying that NBC's independence is being questioned as it seems primarily influenced by the current government. It faulted the imposition of a 5 million naira fine on a broadcast station for an alleged infraction during a live program that featured the Labour Party vice presidential candidate Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, saying that NBC relied on a petition by the media and publicity committee of a political party to impose the fine without any major investigation. Dr. Bati, you know that this has caused a lot of, you know, um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. I believe a letter was written over the weekend and it was described as insurrection um, by this political party. I'll take a, a tweet uh, from Eniola who wrote, the Tinubu campaign organization has been writing petitions against the media to NBC. Over 15 million Naira fines have been imposed so far and with Tinubu's inauguration imminent, there are fears in our industry that media will be gagged under his government. Channels and Arise TV are fighting back. He went further to say, the 15 million Naira fine in question is not only emanating from the APC petitions, the one directly connected to APC petitions is about 9 million Naira. Let me just establish this. Well, you know, in a letter dated March 30th, the APC campaign council media director, Bayon Onuga, had said that Tati Baba Ahmed's comments were not only divisive and subversive, but also inciting and inflammatory. Well, during that interview, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party had said that Buhari should not swear in Tinubu because he did not score 25% of votes in the FCT, which he said was constitutionally required as one of the prerequisites to be declared winner of a presidential election. While well, Ononuga claimed that Dati Baba Ahmed was inciting the public and the Labour Party followers to delegitimize the outcome of the elections. He also alleged that Channels TV breached the NBC rules by allowing Dati to make the remarks. I'm sure we both, we all watched that interview um, that aired live. And this is the reason why Bond has come out to say that he, it appears that, you know, the NBC is trying to gag the media because, as you recall, the interviewer kept on interjecting when Dati Baba Ahmed was making those comments. So they are saying that the NBC needs to do more investigation in order to um, curb this whole uh, fine that they're imposing on broadcast stations. Dr. Bati, really quickly, well, so I can the highlight The National Broadcasting Commission is a regulatory body. Uh, it's a government agency. And there is what is called the National Broadcasting Code. Mm -hmm. But what the uh, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, which has a membership of over 100, you know, broadcast stations uh, in Nigeria, is saying that the NBC is beginning to violate its own code mm -hmm. and suffocating stations. And if the broadcasting organization is suffocating media houses, it means that the uh, 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 broadcasting organization is restricting the scope of media freedom. The last time we had to worry heavily about uh, repression of the, of the media was under the military. And what exactly the BON is saying is that we're more or less back to the era of media repression. Mm -hmm. And they cited in specific terms section 14 of the uh, of the broadcasting code, which has to do with you know infractions. If you have infractions, you are given the opportunity to see your own side. Thou must hear the other side. How the alterum patum. Mm -hmm. That's the principle in law. And then section 15 of the National Broadcasting Code, which spells out you know uh, the uh, kind of a penalties that you can give. So the BON is accusing the National Broadcasting Commission of arbitrariness and fixing fines. Their third allegation is that the NBC is beginning to behave like a political 
like a wing of a political party. And that's where the APC came in. That, okay, if a political party lodges a complaint, and then you don't want to hear the other side, you slam the fines. fines. And then, of course, uh, part of the concern in the industry that these fines have been coming one after the other, you know, from one station to the other, indicating an attempt uh, to restrict the scope of media freedom. So the uh, NBC has a responsibility to respond to the complaint yes. that has been filed by the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, representing over 100 uh, broadcast stations. We're told that the uh, complaint has been sent to uh, Elijah Lai Mohammed, the uh, Minister of Information and Culture. And the uh, request, the prayer in that letter, is asking Elijah Lai Mohammed to call the NBC to order. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that sounds funny. You know, it. Will Elijah Lai Mohammed call it. the NBC uh, to order? <laughs> I mean, he, he having been uh, uh, accused also, you know, of introducing, uh, whether fairly or unfairly, certain provisions into the revised uh, National Broadcasting Code. But what we can insist upon is that, look, for no reason whatsoever should the media be gagged. And this is why, in the media, there has always been a problem about government regulating the media. When, in 1992, they came up with the uh, Nigerian Press Council, now, till tomorrow, journalists are opposed to the idea of a Nigerian Press Council, which will be restricting the scope of practice and coming up with all kinds of, uh, of uh, restrictions. Attempts to even expand the scope of that Nigerian Press Council has been restricted, which is why you now have the Nigerian Press Organization. This is not the first time. We had the Ombudsman before, but now there is a new body by the MPO, Nigerian Press Organization, the MPAN, and other bodies, uh, a body called the Media Complaints Commission, which is an industry generated body yes. to me, listen to complaints. Sure. Let me take that. So and I'll the assumption that. here mm -hmm. is that journalists are in a better position mm -hmm. to regulate themselves, to reinforce their own quotes, and to promote the objective of press freedom. Yes, like I was saying, uh, the complaint comes as the Nigerian Media Complaints Commission, also known as the National Ombudsman, set up to check the excesses and infractions in the practice of print and online journalism in Nigeria was inaugurated on Monday. The commission will serve as an independent forum for resolving complaints about the press quickly, fairly, and free of charge, as well as defend the freedom of the press and the rights of the people to know. Members of the commission were drawn from the media, the bar, the academia, the civil society, which includes the chairman of this day Arise Media Group, Prince Ndukao Baigbina, and Emeka Izeze, who is the chairman of the commission, Rufai. Okay, so a little backtrack on my last story. When I was talking about the NBA not doing anything, I just found the story now, and the NBA actually vowed that they were going to they were going to take those police officers that arrested those lawyers in Rivers State to court. I'll say very good one. And now I will now add another kudos and say kudos to the current NBA chairman. Because we can't have a country, you know, and let me mention his name for honorable mention, uh, Yakubu Makai. Kudos to him for that. Because we can't have a country where police will just run, run amok and this will be done against lawyers. This is very terrible against, and all lawyers should stand up and speak up against it. So kudos to the MBA for doing that. I said those errant police officers will be dealt with. Secondly, Oji as regards this. Mm. I saw what Bond wrote. Calling Alaji Lai Mohammed to fix it is a joke. It's like, <laughs> it's Chucky Hopscotch. It's a joke. We all know the problem with the NBC. The NBC was set up in 1992 as a prelude to broadcast licenses being given to private media houses. Truth has to be said. See, Oji, it's still the military mindset at which the NBC is set up that it used to behave till date. What it does is anything that is injurious to the government shuts it down or people in power. And we can't build a vibrant media through that method. And that's why the NBC keeps being antagonistic. I'm not saying in some regards they've not done their job properly. But when it's time for them to be able to start fair for the ethics of journalism, they take a side that is most times viewed in favor of contending political forces. Mm. 
And they should be very careful about it. Because we've had one too many fans. And I think one thing else is, I think it's time the broadcast station start challenging most of these fans in court. Because that will act as a strong deterrent. And I'm happy Bond has said they should check it. I know the next one that will be able to, that will happen, that will be success, suspect, another fan that will be suspect, should be challenged in court by Bond. Yes. Until we get to that level. But I think what's the way forward for the NBC? This current format can never, and underline my work, can never make the NBC independent. Mm. The fact that it's still somebody in an incumbent government that selects who is the head and the DJ of the NBC, it will never work. Mm. What should be the model? You should have a commission that is sort of like a bulwark of different ideas. Civil society group, women's group, uh, women's rights group, men's group, it should have a full societal representation of media consumers. And they are the ones that should make decisions. You can have a chairman that is just a head of that commission, but the bulk of the decision-making process comes from a voting pattern in the commission. That's the way you can bring about independence. That's the way it's being done in India. But with this model that the man in charge just put appoints an NBC DG, he will definitely dance to, to the tune of the NBC DG. And that's why we are saying, he will definitely dance to the tune of the Minister of Information. That's why NBC has now become a tool in the hands of the Minister of Information. That's the only way we can truly make our media independence. And, and, and that's why till date, I remember that we asked the uh, former DG of NBC, when he came here, when they find us based on videos released for answers, that what did they use to verify the videos that they said was not true, that we released? Mm. We couldn't get a response. So we need to rejig the structure. That's what we need to do. Absolutely. Well, I mean, just uh, by way of footnote, part of the responsibility of the NBC is to give out licenses, mm -hmm. okay? And advise the government of the day appropriately. So if you say you leave it open to everybody, uh, that may not really... Uh, I'm saying a commission uh, that can also sit and vote that's, on that's, even licenses to be reviewed. Wait a moment. You know, but it is important for the leadership of the NBC to do their job you know, in a non-partisan and completely professional manner. Okay. And the media, we do not publish anything injurious to government. There must be a culture of tolerance for criticism. Absolutely. It was uh, Jefferson who said, I would rather have the media and forget about yes. government. But because that is when you can have a good society. All right, a quick correction, Mr. So, Baigbena is not a member of the Media Complaints Commission. He's a former president and life patron of... NPAN. Well, what can I say? Press freedom is a bedrock of any society, yes. and we have to continue to speak about this. We'll take our final story in Enugu State, where Reverend Father Eiji King Baka, who is quite famous for his controversial political stance, has again stirred up another controversy. Well, over the weekend, the clergyman during a sermon claimed that during the just concluded elections, Nigerians referred to the father mother and child in a political party's logo as God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit while encouraging people to vote for the party's candidate. Although the Reverend Father did not mention the name of the party, users on social media have alleged that he was referring to the Labour Party. Father Angbaka said that the electorate took the glory meant for God and gave it to a human being. And so the anger of God has befallen on Nigerians. Well, Father Mbaka then knelt down at the altar to ask God for forgiveness before telling his members to interpret the message as they deem fit. I apologize on behalf of the holy men of God, the whole pastors, the whole priests, the whole bishops. I apologize. I'm not worthy to apologize for bishops, but I'm apologizing. Let the mercy of God descend. Because what we did within this political moment, eh? A lot of indescribable political brouhaha and political jingoism and a lot of atrocities we manifested and buried the power of the sacrament beneath political forces, political hawks and vultures. And they want to vulturize the church. And we turn the church into campaign centers. We turn the church into a place for politicking. We mess up the altar. We defile the altar of the Most High God. How do you want power to move from such altar that have been defiled? 
We cannot continue with such iniquities. I pray that God will forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive their church. Forgive your church. Forgive Christianity in Nigeria. We have gotten it wrong this time. Amen. What can I say? Father, I'm back at again. Thank you both for your great analysis on what's trending today. All right, then. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all.